You look, man, on your phone too much. Oh, look what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't stopped talking about it. <laughs> That's all I talk about. <laughs> so, How are you doing, guys? Oh, oh, am I muted still? Uh, nope, you are oh, on. Yeah. All right, guys, any questions for Nick? Go ahead and fire away. How are you doing, guys? Hey, Nick, I uh, was asking Coach, you know, obviously in the Big Ten, you guys saw a lot of great offensive players and, and handled them pretty well, but the unique challenges that Pat Kavanaugh presents to you guys, how, how are you getting ready for that? I just think just understanding and realizing tendencies that he has, but just understanding that great players like Pat are just going to get theirs and they're going to make the plays that they do. And he's a tour time finalist for a reason. So just picking up the intensity, I mean, across the board, just making sure our leaders, me, Brett, Roman, are just getting on guys and understanding that, I mean, 51 is going to make plays Sunday and we just got to be ready for that. And just once he makes a play, just get to the next one and understand that once he makes those plays, just limit as many as he can. And if we do that, I mean, we like our chances, but again, you got to give credit to 51 because he's a really good player. So just be ready for that. And just again, next play mentality. Hey, are you guys approaching Notre Dame, you know, like it's the toughest test yet this season? And then if, if so, or if not so, how does that change, you know, how you guys prepare for this game, especially knowing that, you know, if it doesn't go the way you guys want it to go, that the season's over, like how, how do you prepare for that mentally? Right. I think, I mean, I think we want to, uh, we want to prepare that like they are the best um, team that we're going to play. I mean, they are the next team and we're not guaranteed anything after this game. So really just making sure we don't leave any stones unturned and just make sure that we're covering all of our bases when we get to the game. So I think we're just making sure, I mean, we're done with finals now. We got that out of the way. So we have a lot of time left to really prepare for this team, really study their nuances and really their schemes and just make sure that we're confident going into the game Sunday. So I think just looking at them as a whole, they're a really talented, disciplined team. They're a traditional Notre Dame team. They're going to be really athletic, really balanced, really traditional, and really um, disciplined. So just understanding what we're going to get for them and just, again, playing our game. So just making sure we cover all the bases and we're ready to go Sunday. Do you feel like, uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure what the fan situation is there, but do you, do you feel like a capacity levels, but do you feel like, having to go on the road to Notre Dame makes that challenge e even more tougher. Do you feel like you guys have to bring even more energy and, and, you know, be even more in the zone for this game? For sure. I agree. I am I think so. Understanding that, I mean, they don't have to make a journey. They don't have to do any travel, but I think we're going to bring that energy. I mean, I hope we do. I hope guys realize that you don't get many quarterfinal games, especially against an opponent like Notre Dame. So I hope we bring that energy. I'm going to expect that we do. Um, depending on how many guys go, I think we're going to bring the guys that want to bring the juice, bring the energy and make sure that we have no regrets when we get to Sunday. So definitely going to be an interesting environment. I mean, I, I don't know what Notre Dame's mindset is, but understanding that they, they get a home game in the quarterfinals is probably pretty cool, but we just got to match their intensity because we know they're going to bring it Sunday. Thanks, Nick. Nick, how many times have you played Notre Dame in, in your time at Marquette and uh, at Maryland? Um, two my freshman year, one my sophomore, junior year, one last year. So that's five, five, I think, total. Did you, have you, uh, was Kevin on the mix last year? Were you, did you cover him last year? Yeah, I covered Pat last year. And then the years before that, Ryder Garnsey, I think. You did? Oh, wow. Similar players, different players? Um, looking at the two, I think Ryder just kind of, I think everyone knows that he just kind of, as creative as can be, you know, that you can't really scout anyone like that or, or practice anyone in practice to give you a good luck for that. I think Pat, um, I think they both play with a ton of intensity. They have no um, inclination or they have no hesitancy to get into a scrum, to put their nose in and just kind of do whatever they need to do to win. So I think there's a similarity there. Um, but I give Pat all the credit in the world from last year, watching him and playing him last year and then watching the film this year. I mean, he looks like a Torton finalist for sure. And I think he backs it up completely. I mean, he's finding guys, making everyone better and then he can get his when he wants. So just making sure we're ready for that. And I mean, there's a couple similarities between the two of them, but I mean, Pat, I think he's just on another level right now. So I give him credit for that. Hey Nick, it's not only Pat Cavanaugh. I mean, we jack a bice and uh, what's the name more. I mean, they've got a lot of talent on that team. Is there that tendency, like I guess a lot of teams have with Maryland, 
you overplay, you overdo Jared, and then everybody else burns you. You have to protect against that, I assume. And second question, and I'll stop. You came to Maryland to go to Final Fours. You came to Maryland to, to try and get the belt. How psyched are you for this Sunday's game? You've got, I, I know you fairly well now, and I, I can feel the heat in your mind looking forward to this game. Am I correct? I think so, but um, going on your first question, I think, I mean, they're a top five team, top four team in the country. I mean, I think the record backs them up. They have talent everywhere. It's not one guy, like you said, and just Pat. Um, they complement each other really well, like in all Notre Dame teams. They're very athletic. I mean, if they get through their strengths, they're going to do a lot of damage. I mean, they know who they are, and they play to the identity. So just making sure that we're ready to go on Sunday for everything like that. And for the second one, just, yeah, I mean, I came here and that's what Coach Tillman sold me when I was in the transfer portal, that I, if I want to win, if I want to compete at the highest level and get everyone's best shot, you come to Maryland and, I mean, go up against everyone and just kind of compete with the best. And, I mean, that's what I'm here for. I mean, I'm all about winning. I've always wanted to compete at the highest level from youth till now. So just continuing that to go and just making sure I'm ready to go Sunday and ready to give my all and just leave it all out there. Best of luck, Nick. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Nick, um, not sure how much you end up on um, malts in practice, but, you know, from a defender trying to account for him in an offense, um, you know, what does he bring to the table from seeing him in practice? Well, I cover him here and there, and he's definitely a pain in the butt. Um, he is may not be the best athlete on the team, but he's so savvy. He's so slick. He has the softest hands I think I've ever played with or against. And he just knows what he's really good at, and he's going to play to that strength. He's not going to go any out of his comfort zone because he doesn't have to with great guys like Jared and Logan feeding him the ball. So um, I think he just plays to his strengths. He understands what he needs to do, how to compliment Jared and Logan. And you really just got to make sure you find him all the time. I mean, there's a few guys like that in the country like Maltz. And, I mean, I love him having him on our team. I hate defending guys like that because you always got to make sure where they are. And he just puts himself in um, places to succeed. So... I mean, Danny's a good one. He makes sure he knows what he's doing. And I mean, love having him on the team. Thank you. How'd your exam go on Tuesday? Um, it went all right. I mean, senior year, last exam, you're just kind of getting to the pile on, as my brother says. So it went all right. I had a couple of assignments that I needed to do that I got in, made sure that everything was good to go. So it went all right. I mean, it is what it is at this point. Just get the grade and then move on. So it, 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 here nor there. I mean, I'll take it. You're done. That's great. I'm done. Hey, hey what was the last? When was the last time? Uh, tell me about the mustache, the beard, and the hair. Last time I cut my hair was two summers ago. Um, my two mom. Summers. Two wow. summers. Yeah, and then obviously clean up here nor there. But with COVID, it's tough to tough to get to the stylist. Um, my mom's big on the hair. She. <laughs> she she's the one with curly hair and I was lucky enough to get it lucky and definitely quotation marks um beard um I I actually was rocking the beard until playoffs so I, I didn't shave it from Thanksgiving until when we got up to Penn State and then mustache I think was just a different look that I wanted to rock uh, not many guys on the team have been rocking or are willing to rock it so I mean the old guy here had to do something about it so it's something I mean it's something I mean I mean I don't know I think Social media. I don't have any social media, but I was being told about it that they were they were saying mixed results, and I mean I'll take it as long as the guys appreciate it, enjoy it. So I'm I'm fine with that. That's fun, for sure. And then yeah, a little wax here nor there. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, you got to wax it. It's that long, huh? Oh yeah, we we can do some do some fun things with it. I don't know just where to go or anything like that. So I'd have to do some research, but yeah, that is what it is. Uh, last thing, if, if no one else is gonna gonna jump in, uh, their extra man Nick is is outstanding. Uh, they got big numbers. They had weapons. What what you, you know you watch it this week on tape? What kind of jumps out at you? I just think they have guys that know their role and know what they're really good at, and they get put in positions to succeed. I think from everyone from the eight, the big lefty shooter. I mean, you got to make sure you know where he is at all times. But I mean, he's just more so much more than that. He showed the tendency to be able to skip to Pat on the bottom right wing they have shooters that complement each other and guys is just they trust and they make sure they put them in position to see whether it's york on the bottom left or inside or weston that can 
skip through the defense and everything like that. So we just got to make sure we know tendencies, positions where they want to be, their happy places, quote unquote. So just making sure that we know what they want to do. They're pretty basic, but they're just really good in their roles. So just making sure we make them uncomfortable, we're in the positions that we need to be in and just execute from there. Because again, if we can steal a couple of those, I mean, they get goals like on man up pretty much every game. So if we can steal those, especially in a close game that we're expecting, that could be a uh, huge. Yeah, oh, that's great. Thank you. Happy places. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it, everybody. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thanks for hanging around.